Recently, you would have seen a video over social media with Pete Cowan and Hideki Matsuyama. Pete teaching Hideki how to improve his transition into the downswing. Now, a lot of comments came over Twitter and Instagram tagging myself in it because I'm a coach at the Pete Cowan Golf Academy, kind of asking, what does that really mean? What is he trying to achieve? Why is he doing this drill? So in this video, I'm gonna be telling you how and why. And in this video, I'm gonna be using a training aid that Pete really does like to use. He's a huge advocate for this golf brand and this kind of, this training aid. And it's something that we use a little bit in the academy as well. And I'm hoping in today's video, I can use this club to help you understand what Pete was talking about with Hideki, G-Force Iron, okay? So the G-Force Iron, you're probably thinking, what is that? You'll see straight away, look how bendy the shaft is, all right? so. Basically, if you're able to swing the golf club on plane, you're gonna be able to control the golf shot. If you swing the golf club too much on the outside, because it's so bendy, you're just gonna throw it over the outside and probably totally miss hit it. If you drop it too much on the inside and maybe get an early extension, you're gonna have the same sort of issue with the club, probably bottoming out a little bit too soon and catching it heavy. So this is a fantastic training aid to encourage you to keep the club on plane or in encourage you to have a better transition. So two key words in what Pete was saying to Hideki that I really picked up on was lower and turn because the majority of amateurs that slice the golf ball actually turn and then lower. So if you imagine you get to the top of the backswing, the body rotates, then the arms come down. And by doing so, the arms then swing the golf club to the left of target if you're a right-handed golfer. So that makes the swing path out to win, which depending on what happens with the club base can create a pull, pull hook or a slice or whatever. Or if you've got it under control, it could be a nice fade. So the reason Pete was talking about lowering first then rotating is that he can use his shoulders, he can use the arms to kind of really lower, load up the power, get the club down and on plane. You see the shaft of the club there pointing parallel to my feet and pointing straight down the target line behind me. And that's pulling the clubs and lowering the arms into position and then using that hip turn there to really kind of work through the shot and create the power. He's able to kind of rotate his lower body, he's able to transition his body weight to his lead side, all the while bringing the golf club down and on plane and behind the golf and behind the golf for themselves. So we can actually get into a position where if we lower the arms down first and then we clear that left hip, you'll see that the, my lower body's pointing out to the target. My chest is approximately 20 to 20 degrees or so left of the golf ball. My hands are in front of the golf ball. So the very last thing that wants to come down to make contact with the golf ball is the club head. So I've used, I've used my upper body, I've lowered my arms back down into position and I've used my lower body for the power and the, for the rotation as they come through the shot. So if I can lower the arms first there and then add that rotation, we should, oh, strangle myself with my sunglasses, we should, <laughs> be able to compress down into the golf ball. So although this video is about the transition and the lowering and the turning, it's important to understand what's happened before that as well, because we need to make sure we've loaded up the arms up to the top of the backswing, we've loaded the shoulders, we've got the club into a really good position. So just to take you into takeaway, we see the shaft of the club there pointing down my target line, parallel to my feet. You see the club's leading, head, leading edge is also parallel to my spine angle. And then from there, what Pete wants to see is that the body's still rotating, but also but rotating the arms upwards. So we can really feel it up here in the shoulders that you've started to kind of really load up. You get that height, you get that rotation, and you've also managed to maintain your width. So you've got a really strong coil which we then want to release into the golf ball. And I feel like a lot of golfers do get a nice rotation. You can end up at the top of the backswing looking really strong. But if that transition goes turn lower, we often get outside too much. We often see, even going from the other way, so if you're a golfer that hits the ball with a hook or you catch it fat or you hit a big push, all three of those shots are from the same family of faults. We can often see golf get to the top here and then just kind of really drop. So you've lowered the arms, 
but you've pushed your hips in. So the early extension of the hips back into the golf ball is going to get the club stuck here. So we're not back. We're not going to be back on plane. So although you've lowered your arms first, if you've pushed your hips into the golf ball, you're going to be stuck. And this is where golfers get very handsy and have to try to rescue the club as much as possible. So although it's important we understand how we get up to the top of the backswing, that transition is vital. So a low, to go into more depth about lowering of the arms, we're pulling the arms downwards, okay? So I'm basically bringing my glove back in front of my chest and in front of my right quad or my trail quad. So I get to there, I'm gonna pull it down into the trail quad and then I'm gonna rotate. A problem is a lot of golfers that slice the golf ball often try and get the feeling the arms are then working in behind the right pocket. All that's gonna do is turn your slice movement into that position that we just spoke about there. We definitely do not want to see. So let's try and get the club back on plane. So top of the backswing, we're gonna pull down into that trail thigh, shaft of the club pointing down the target line, and then the lead hip's gonna clear. Okay, and you can do these shots really slowly. There, pull it down and clear. And just get into those sort of drills where you pull, you're kind of really stripping the golf swing back and you're getting an understanding of where that club wants to be and then how you rotate through. I watched a recent video with Rory McIlroy, I think it was with Martin Hall, and they were talking about Rory's kind of favorite feels and how he gets himself back into position on the way down. Because it's no secret that over the years, Rory has worked with Pete. He's worked with Pete as a, as a, at a collegiate level. He worked with him at a national level with the Irish team. So he's known Pete for a very long time. Pete's always kind of come in and out of his team as and when kind of Rory's been really struggling. He always kind of goes back to Pete to help him kind of recalibrate. And the reason he does that is because in general, Rory does tend to get that little bit stuck on the inside. He hits the draw and his bad shot can be that kind of loss out towards the right hand side. Peak is kind of a little bit more of the opposite where he works golfers a little bit more in front of the chest and works everything a little bit more left and helps stabilize the club face. So it's almost the opposite of what Rory does wrong. And that's why when they get together, they make a fantastic team. And one of the key drills that Rory was talking about was the split drill, the split hand drill. So again, this is a huge drill that Pete really kind of teaches a lot to a lot of his golfers. You may have seen it with the likes of Henrik Stenson and Westwood over the years. He kind of gets them to split grip. So that's very much the same as the, what the G-Force is doing. So if you're in a parameter golfers, the G-Force gives you a lot more feel because you're feeling the flex of the head. You're feeling the flex of the shaft and it's not gonna let you get away with any bad movements. It's gonna give you some really, well, poor feedback in regards to how quality your shot is because of the fault that you've made. But the one thing Rory was talking about, and the reason why Rory does this is it's his transition. So he's able to get both hands back out in front of his body. So he keeps the hands hinged, but he gets the extension of both arms kind of pushing straight down. And that's exactly what the G-Force wants to do. And that's exactly what Pete was explaining to Hideki when he said to lower the, lower the arms first and then rotate. And what you'll also know, and I do this drill a lot in the past, or I've done it a lot in the past myself, is the split grip for golfers like me and Rory, which I'm not trying to categorize myself in the same even planet as Rory, but I'm the same sort of golfer. I get the club stuck on the inside and I flip the hands over. I don't do it anywhere near as good as Rory, but you know what I mean. So what the split grip does, it gets it back into position. And from here, you're not able to flip it. Or when you do flip it, you really, really flip it, okay? So the idea is to kind of hold the face and rotate. So you go lower, turn, okay? Try and do the split grip with a few shots. You go lower, turn. Oh, there you go, left. Golf ball's gone. Power hook, because that is what I do in my golf swing. I flip it, flip it, flip it, flipping hell, okay? So I need to practice that drill as well. I'm quite good at getting myself on into that position, but then we flip it left, idiot. Okay, so there's so much we can all work on, but understanding the terminology of what Pete was talking about to Hideki is absolutely vital. Like I said before, the majority of golfers will turn and lower, okay? They'll get to the top of the backswing, they'll turn and lower, and there's your slice, okay? So we've got to feel like we're going to lower right in front of the trail quad, shaft of the club pointing at the target and then we turn okay 
and you get that nice wide follow through finish. You've stabilized the club face and you get this shot. Oh, that shot, the thin fade. <laughs> Guys, thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do leave some comments below. Always good to interact. But for today, from a baked Royal North Devon Golf Club, this is the day after Cameron Smith has won the Open Championship. Oh, who doesn't want to be playing golf right now? Such a fantastic time of year to be playing golf. And the Open always gets those juices flowing. So congratulations to Cam. He was on a recent video with me back in February. So if you want to check that out, please do. It's on the Saudi International playlist. As for today, from a glorious Royal North Devon, I'll see you again in the next video.